my dad, Trip Crane, for the Murray Fire Department, and um, I, and we're gonna learn some Murray or er, some fire safety tips today. I hope you enjoy them. Thank you. Thanks, Collier, for introducing your dad, Lieutenant Crane. So, Lieutenant, what will we be talking about next? First off, we're going to start by talking about stop, drop, roll, and cover. With stop, drop, roll, and cover, anytime you're in a situation, whether it's near a campfire or outside playing, and something happens to where you catch on fire, whether it's your pants, your shirt, anything you have on, the rule is to number one, stop, don't panic. Number two, drop to the ground. Number three is gonna to be to cover your face. You always wanna make sure you cover your face. It's very important to cover your face so that you don't inhale any of that smoke or heat. And then after you cover your face, it's number four, just roll around on the ground back and forth. All right, thank you. From TV 13, I'm Mikhail Otterman. And now, Lieutenant, I think we're gonna be talking about smoke detectors. That's right, today we're gonna to talk about smoke detectors. Everyone should have smoke detectors in their home. They look like this and they either go on the ceiling or on the wall. Every year you should check it by pressing this button and it's gonna make a really loud beep. Just like that. That lets you know that the battery inside is still working. Now you should change the battery twice a year. You change the battery on daylight savings time twice a year And next we'll be talking about general fire safety. General fire safety is going to come into play at your home, at your friend's house, or even whenever you're out to eat, or at school. At school you have fire drills several times a year. During a fire drill you do the same thing every time. You probably get your class lined up and you go out to your meeting spot. You need to do the exact same things at home. When you're at home, you need to have a meeting spot. So whenever you get home this afternoon, make sure you go home and talk to your mom or your dad or grandma, granddad, whoever's at home with you about a meeting spot. Now that meeting spot can be the big oak tree in the front yard. It can be the neighbor's house. Just make sure you're careful crossing the road. It can be anywhere that you feel safe and comfortable and everywhere that your family knows to go. If for some reason, all of you go to the same spot, but somebody's not there, then that lets us know whenever we show up in an emergency that you may not be out of the house. So whenever you're in the house and you have an emergency, you always need to have two exits. So if you're in your bed asleep at night and your fire alarm starts going off, you need to get out of your bed, you need to walk over to your door and you need to feel your door. If your door is hot, then you need to go to your secondary exit. Your secondary exit can be a window or, you know, the roof, anything like that that you can get to to get away from the fire. Now, if your secondary exit is clear, you go out the window. If it's not, then you actually stay inside your room and we'll come in and get you. Make sure that when you stay inside your room, you don't hide under the bed or under your cover. You know, find a corner somewhere safe get there, don't get under the window because more than likely that's the way we're gonna come in. Now, if you're in your bed and you go to your door and your door's not hot, it's very important that you open your door slowly, you look outside and see if there's any smoke or fire. If there's not smoke or fire, then go out your room, shut your door, and stay low, get real low to the ground, crawl if you have to, and exit the house. We have a saying here, it's called stay low and go. So if your fire alarm goes off, make sure that you get out of your bed, you stay low, you check your door, and if everything's clear and safe, then you go outside to your meeting place. Once outside of your meeting place, say you forgot your favorite stuffed animal, or you're worried about your mother or your dog, it's not okay to go inside. Once you get outside, you have to stay outside. That's also another big saying here at the Murray Fire Department is get out, and stay out. Make sure that no matter what, once you get to that meeting place, you stay there. And then whenever we get there, we'll go in and get whatever you're missing. All right, now on to Michaela. Hey, little tigers. 
hope you're still watching. There might be a quiz at the end of this. So, Lieutenant, what are we going to talk about next? Next, we're going to talk about electrical safety. Electrical safety is very important whenever you're at home or at school or anything like that. You need to be very careful that if you have something that needs to be plugged in or something that needs to be unplugged, always ask an adult or an older brother or somebody's around that knows about it. Because if you stick something in wrong or try to pull something out, then you could actually get shot. Very good advice. Thank you, Lieutenant. This game we like to call Dress the Fireman. I'm gonna hand it over to Battalion Chief Franklin and Firefighter Russell Boyd. Hello guys, gals. Today we wanna let you see what a fireman looks like. This is Firefighter Russell Boyd, and I think he's a pretty nice guy, don't you guys? So, when we arrive at your house, he's not gonna look like he does right now. So we need some help dressing. So the first thing we need to do and I need some class participation. What's something that he needs to wear? First off, anybody say boots? Let's see if Russell put on his boots. Now I think he's ready to fight a fire. Is he ready? No, he's not ready yet, is he? Because he's just got his boots and pants on. So let's, uh, what comes next? What do you think he should wear now? Maybe. Maybe a jacket. Let's see if Firefighter Boy can wear a jacket. After he puts this on, I bet he's probably ready. Is he ready yet to fight a fire? No, not at all. Is it still Firefighter Russell? It is, and he's still a nice guy. He's starting to look different though, isn't he? All right, so the next thing he's gonna put on is an air pack. And this is how Firefighter Boy is going to look when he arrives in your home. And like Lieutenant Crane said, if there's not a safe place and not everybody's accounted for, Firefighter Boy's got to go in and try to find you and all your values. Is he ready now? No, not at all. So now we're going to get him dressed up. And he's going to change a lot, but it's still Firefighter Boy. Are you guys having fun today? I hope so. Is it still Russell? Shake my hand. It's still Firefighter Russell, right? He's still a nice guy, but he looks different. Okay, I want you guys to listen real close because you gotta listen for him when he just says fire. Murray Fire. Murray Fire. See how different he looks? Now he's standing up. We're going to show Mr. Russell as we enter a fire, he's going to be crawling. That way you know what to look for. We never, ever hide from firefighters. Firefighters are good guys. We never hide from a fire. So if you hear Firefighter Boyd yelling, fireman, fireman, you got to get his attention. Okay? So he's going to get on his hands and knees and wear his glove. He's still Firefighter Boyd. He just looks different, but he's still a good guy. We might have to help him back up, but that's okay too. <laughs> With his new helmet. I just just get him to cross. Let me say something like that. See how he looks different, but it's still firefighter boy. Don't ever hide from firefighters. And you just completed how to dress a fire. Murray Elementary for watching that. Um, I hope you enjoyed it, and I would like to give an extra thank you to my dad, Troop Crane, from the Murray Fire Department, Lieutenant.